Do you have that feeling working with old systems and how dull that is? Who in this room prefers to work in a greenfield situation? Aha, hardly anybody. That's good, then you are at the right place. Because now we are going to discuss how, it, how fun it can be to work with legacy systems, things that from time to time we just have to do. Please give a warm applause to Wukash Jevjecki <laughs> and Witold Bolt. Hi guys. Hello. Okay, so we are at the tech stage of conference when people usually talk about the new technologies, trends and cool stuff. But we want to talk about legacy. We want to talk about it because probably most of you or maybe even all of you used to work or work with legacy software. So, what is legacy software? We can easily say that mainframe and related technologies are legacy. Probably you can agree with me uh, that client-server applications are also legacy. All Java applications and .NET applications are legacy as well. But I can also say that JavaScript application can also be a legacy. Yeah, Lukas did a summary of some of the technologies related to old legacy systems. But we can look at the topic also from the perspective of commonly seen problems that we need to kind of solve while working in such environments. One of the problems that we commonly see is uh, related to tooling. You know, all the tools that you use are either old, unusable, or simply composed of some stupid shell scripts that nobody can use efficiently, and it's hard to do any serious modern style development pipeline around them. Uh, next problem relates to the knowledge, lack of good technical documentation, lack of know-how popular among the people you have, and so on and so on. It's really hard to get the understanding of the underlying architecture of the system you are working with, which leads further to serious problems with the team. It's really hard to have a motivated team that knows how to solve all those problems while working in a legacy system. Furthermore, it's often causing you much more serious problems because if you don't have a strong team, typically your development will be, uh, become very, very slow. And <coughs> what is even more uh, harmful is that your quality will also suffer in time up to the point where you start to have, like, you know, those crazy strange problems with software that nobody is able to solve, like suddenly the performance drops by a few thousand percentages down and you are lost without any help. So this is the scenario we also was involved in, in with old systems. So now we can provide a very simple definition of legacy software. Legacy software is software that nobody likes, nobody knows, nobody wants to know it. But it is still useful software. We don't want to take care about the unuseful software. Uh, so if you wonder if you are working with legacy, if you can answer for those questions, yes, you have legacy in your house. So what to do? You have product, which is still useful, but it is not shiny and it not looks like you want to. You have problems. But on the other hand, there are technologies that uh, provide you tools and uh, documentation and people. So rewrite it, yeah, and rewrite it and provide a new cool product. But yeah, it seems like a very obvious and nice idea. You solve all your problems. You have a shiny new car, shiny new solution. Seems great. But in fact, it's really, really hard and really, really risky. Together with Ukash, we spent like 15 years in enterprise software development. And during this time, we saw only one single successful re-implementation of a big complex system. And we saw a number of failures. And why people are failing at rewriting complex systems? The answer is complexity that is underestimated and overestimated. Behind the legacy system, there are very often are thousands of mandates of developers who can be smart, who can be too smart, who can be lazy. They worked under pressure of time. So inside a legacy, you can find a hidden complexity. If you will ignore it, you will, do, uh, 
uh, you will underestimate your effort and you will fail. On the other hand, there is uh, overestimated pro over overestimation problem as well. Uh, if you overestimate your uh, rewrite, uh, you will fail at the beginning and you will bring to your company a corporate legends. This comp co corporate legends prevent the system uh, from any change. If we will ask, uh, maybe we will do something with this code, probably you will hear, don't touch it, we tried, it is too complex, it is impossible. So how to uh, do a good rewrite? First of all, you need to estimate well. To estimate well, you need to practice hard working over hard meeting. I saw it many times, one room, two group of people, who uh, arguing uh, if it is hard or easy, if it is expensive or cheap. So be brave, do the proof of concept, and based on the proof of concept, estimate the whole the system. Yeah, so the goal here is to you know, discuss the details, discuss the facts and figures around the rewrite or around the complex problem you are facing, and to stop discussing feelings that people have Typically, people working on something for a longer period of time build kind of those um, emotional connections to the, to the system and discuss their beliefs and feelings. So based on facts, based on figures, allow yourself to fail, but fail fast or succeed. And if you do the analysis well, you most likely will come to a conclusion that you know, a full rewrite is a mission impossible. It can be done. It's too expensive or too risky or both. So what to do then? Are you stuck with your old system forever? Well, it depends, of course. But Captain Obvious is obviously with a good advice here. Instead of thinking, how do I rewrite the thing, try to concentrate on solving real problems within the system. And now we will share some of our ideas how to solve common problems uh, with legacy system without rewriting it. But before we do that, we would like to define a very simple abstract architecture of such an uh, enterprise class system. It will con consist of three layers, presentation, business, and storage. In some technologies, it does not really matter what tech stack are you using here. OK, so we have our software. And we know that the biggest problem today uh, for our software is the lack of motivated team. So what can we do? We can bring your life to the software and open it to the new technology. Pick up one layer, create some kind of add-on uh, together with additional path uh, to your data flow in the application. Uh, and thanks to that, you will make your team happy and you will open your application to the new team. But which is important, this is only add-on. This is not replacing the whole uh, layer, which can be expensive and do not provide the technologies to the more than one layer because you can provide risk as well. Yeah, and exactly. This is what we did in one of the banking systems we were working on. There was a huge, uh, massive old middleware in C++ that everyone was afraid of. Uh, and so we introduced additional backend component, uh, a parallel business layer um, application written in Java which allowed us to bring many young, happy, shiny people to the team and increase the overall productivity of, of the entire team. Of course, it required us to be very brave and do some combat and fights with the architects because the idea is all about breaking existing architectural rules in the system for good purposes. So this is one of the ideas to allow new people to come in and if they come in, they start um, doing more development. But this is not the end of the story. Yeah, because we added some new technology, and we opened that system to the new people. But still, it is inside our uh, old legacy. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the modern tools that supports us in continuous integration, continuous deployment, and so on. So here, uh, you need to be smart and create some kinds of glue that uh, allow you to connect the old system with the modern tools. Don't create the tools. Use the standard tools and create the glue. And again, the idea is relatively simple. We have all the great tools around us. We should know them very well. Your developers should know them very well. So the, so the idea here is basically to write more scripts, write more plugins, write more 
tools that would allow you to use good and modern practices in older systems. Uh, very often, for some reason, uh, people are ignoring this and are stuck with very old and non-productive ways of doing common things. Uh, therefore, our idea here is to be brave enough to introduce new tools. In reality, it will turn out that it is much easier to integrate nice tools, you know, to manage dependencies, build pipeline, and so on, than it is to implement actual functionalities in your system, and it gives you great, great value and allow the team to be, you know, more agile and productive, like those guys on the photo. Yeah. So stop moaning. Uh, the complaining will not change anything. Uh, codify your knowledge. Codify the magical knowledge is inside your team. Uh, create the glue which will connect the standard tools with your software. And if we talk tools, we are not only relating to, you know, some external applications that would help you around your system, but very often we also need to think inside of the system itself. In one of the projects we've been together in, uh, the, the key to success was to create a smart new connector that would allow new uh, two layers, two backend layers to talk to each other. And it, in fact, allowed the organization to save like thousands of euro of in, in development. And the connector itself was very simple, although many people in the team thought that it is impossible to write something like that. It's, in reality, it turned out to be much simpler than it initially uh, seemed to. I heard that this is the blockchain implementation from Poland from 70s, but it is the biggest big building in Poland. It's located close to this area, and inside this building you can find a 2,000 flats. The legacy software is very often the same, so inside one building block, it is a thousands of functions. So idea here is to extract some of them to the separate application. Yeah, and if you remember what we told you about rewriting complex systems, the reason for the problems there was that it is really hard, you know, to destroy this big building and build a new one for all those people, but it is much easier to take one family and find a new home for this family and continue doing so. So the idea is basically this. You find some business functionalities, take them out from the old system, create new application for this particular functionality, and on top of that, you are required to provide a very thin, very simple integration layer, like a glo global router or a portal engine, or whatever you feel feasible for your technology that would allow your users to have a seamless experience while switching between the applications. We've seen it working in one of our projects very nicely. It required us to have external session store, external authorization, modules, but it helps a lot. And eventually, your old system will almost disappear automatically at some point later in the development. Do you remember when I said that JavaScript can be a legacy? Now I'm going to prove it. Inside our company, we have the application that development started in 2012. So it's pretty young application. Inside the front end, you can find the libraries like Knockout, Bootstrap, or backbone. So there are no modern tools, uh, but Knockout and Bootstrap was shiny and beautiful in 2012. And today, it's easily e easier to find a COBOL senior developer than backbone Java the backbone senior developer. So it is a legacy. Yet, for many reasons, we had to uh, introduce a series of new developments in the system. We replace the visual part of the UI. We wanted to improve the user experience. And we were lacking people to do the job in the old tech stack. So naturally, there, there was a decision to be made whether we do a full rewrite of the front end or do we leave it as it is and live with it for the upcoming years. We really wanted to get away from the old stack, so we did the estimates of the full front and side rewrite of the application but we couldn't accept the cost and the risk involved with that. Luckily, we found a better way to do it. Yeah. So our legacy consists of architectural layers. And inside this big layer, you can find the design patterns uh, where you can find layers as well. So Knockout 
implemented uh, MVVM uh, design pattern. The idea was to replace only view layer of Knockout with React and create some kind of glue uh, to connect the model view from Knockout with React. Thanks to that, we provided the modern React components into old software. Yeah, it allowed us to take all those young, talented front-end developers to work on this system with the tools that they know and that they can reuse in other systems. But it also allows us to plan new functionalities and uh, develop them only using fresh and modern tools and eventually get away from the uh, old and not supported tech stack. So this, this is the way how we solved the Logimi case. OK, so now it's time to a final scene summary. We shown you a problem. We talked about the problems that are related with legacy. We, give you, we gave you some advice how to solve it. We shown you the real case, how to solve your prob problems with the real software, real legacy software. And it all together comes to final advice. Be brave. Like this guy. Be smart. Like me. And you will get the reward eventually. Yet, it's not uh, finished. There is one more thing involved. If you think about all those ideas, being smart and brave enough, you see that you need to take some technical decisions at the central points of your activities. You need to pick the technology behind the solution you will be building or you will be changing. And uh, if there is a decision to be made, very often this guy of or one of his friends steps in with his advices. This is our favorite Mr. Hipster developer who, when asked about how to build modern, efficient, highly scalable system, will throw a series of technologies you never heard of, or you heard of them, but you are afraid to use them, or whatever. Many, many crazy technical ideas. Some of them are nice, some of them are strange. We use some of them in our projects as well. Uh, but the problem here is that those guys believe that, you know, there is one single way on how you do highly performant systems, and it's Vertex. You must use Vertex because the other way around you will die. And although we love those guys, we love those technologies and so on, we are big fans of them. We have one message. <coughs> so simply stop. Um, and the reason here is that we are, together with Ukash, we are enterprise software developers. And we know from our experience that the only choice you can make in such systems is to go, you know, like really mainstream. You should use modern technologies, which are up to date, which are very popular, um, and which, when they become legacy, will have a nice path to go forward. So this is our final advice. Thank you for attention. We hope to meet all of you at our stand uh, at InfoShare and also on the social media. If you have any questions, we are here for today's. So thank you, guys. Uh, and that's it. Thank you.